In this new serial episodes, we will discover Kang, the capital of Calvado, a city rich in history that has survived the centuries, from William the Conqueror to the landing of the Allies on the beaches of Normandy during the World War II. Between the memorial, its dynamic city center, its green spaces, its gastronomy, its culture. Even its proximity to the sea, the lively and the dynamic city can be discovered in different facets. Before we set off, please subscribe to our channel and help us to make more informative and interesting videos. Thank you. Caen is the third largest city in Normandy. It is about 25 square kilometers, and almost all the famous sightseeing places are in the center. You can go by tramway, by bus, by bike, and even by foot. All the public transportation information can be reached by twistle.fr. There is a free shuttle bus in red goes in circle in the town center, which is very convenient for the tourists and also for the canes. I choose to go by bike, and my first stop was the number one historical site on the list, the Abbey Ozum. Just nearby. We can find the Church of the Saint Etienne de Vieux, or Saint Stephen. This church was badly damaged, and nowadays it was not opened to the public anymore. The Abbey aux Hommes was founded in 1063 by William the Conqueror and remains a beautiful monument containing a wealth of rich history. The Abbey of Church of Saint Stephen. Listed as a historical monument since 1840, reflects the past splendor of the Dukes of Normandy, and is one of the world's finest examples of the 11th century Norman Romanesque art. The fact that William the Conqueror himself is buried in the choir of this church is testament of his glorious past. The most ancient documents, the Pressure Archives, which at least two of them were signed by William the Conqueror. The impact on England of William's conquest was profound. Changes in the church, aristocracy, culture, and language of the country have persisted into modern times. The conquest brought the kingdom into closer contact with France and forged the ties between France and England that lasted throughout the Middle Ages. The Abbey has weathered a millennium of the turbulent European history, rising phoenix like from the ash of wars and strife. The monastic buildings, for example. Were rebuilt by Benedictine monks of the Congregation of Saint Maur following one such period. There have been no monks at the Abbey since the French Revolution, but it has retained its splendor and importance well into the modern times. In 1804, the monastic buildings became a college and were christened the Lycée Malherbe in. 1892. He became a powerful symbol of freedom and brotherhood in the summer of 1944, when thousands of civilians sought refuge within its walls during the Allied bombardment of the occupied Caen. Parce que tout tremblait forcément dans la maison, les carreaux tombaient et j'avais une grande glace et je tenais la tasse. 
YouTube. Ça, ça m'est resté gravé. Bon, puis finalement, c'était un démon, c'était de la poussière partout. Puis alors, ce silence après le, 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 le bombardement. Here is the chapter hall. The monks gathered daily in the chapter hall to hear a reading of a chapter from the rule of Saint Benedict. They made decisions of the abbey and confessed their sins in this room. Today it is the city wedding chamber. The conquest of England was followed by a reorganization of the English clergy. Anglo-Saxon abbots and bishops were gradually replaced by Normandy clerics, including three very important from this abbey, L'Enfance, Po, and Gondolf. L'Enfance became the archbishop of Canterbury. He played a major role in Norman politics and in the decisions of the English church. Gondolf was named bishop of Rochester and became responsible for the construction of the Tower of London in 1078. The career of this peerless builder perfectly illustrates the spread of Norman architecture to England. Actually, the 11th century and the 12th century marked the principle of the Norman architecture. It is essentially characterized by the purity and the position of the lines. The buildings are simple and the curving is rarely figurative. Great importance is given to the structural elements such as the facade and the bell tower, which are carefully crafted. Enhancing light was also one of the guiding principles for the builders. Lantern towers and the high three-level ceilings made most of it. Do you notice that all the stones from this abbey are a little bit similar with those stones of Winchester, Canterbury, Dunham, Norwich and Ely, and Abbey of St. Alban and Romsey, and the Tower of London in England? Yes, they are all built with con stone. The stone could be quite big. Look at this one, it's a very big stone. It's called con stone and the whole building actually, all made of current stone. The mass timing board. This oak board was made in 1944 by François Poche, a late cabinet maker who hand sculpted all of the woodwork in a bay. The four columns indicate lines in Latin when the monks were to worship and which duties they were to fulfill during the services. The cloister, this term derived from the Latin classroom, meaning enclosure. This enclosed square yard is the heart of the abbey. It is surrounded by the gallery which provide access to abbey's main locations, which enabled the monks to focus on God through the contemplation and meditation. Its Tuscana architecture without the ornamentation is in a complete harmony with the abbey church. This hung staircase was built in Constant between 1761 and 1764. He gave the monks access to their cells, to the infirmary and to the library. It was designed according to the principle of stereotomy. The stones were cut with different volumes. The vault is held in place simply because of the pressure of one stone upon the other. Now a bastion of peace and a tranquility in the heart of the city, the abbey opens its door to the visitors seeking to come and the purity of architecture. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the Abbey aux Dames. Don't miss it.